your kind introduction and for that awesome uh, video. I'm going to definitely make sure that my agents are aware of that because that's a great demo reel. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I want to thank the HRC for this, um, this incredible honor. It means a lot to me. And I specifically have to thank the HRC because um, uh, I recently got engaged. Legal to get married. And for those of you who don't know, planning a wedding is uh, incredibly stressful. So I want to thank the HRC for adding stress to my life. <laughs> no, of course I'm kidding. It is, it is uh, it's an amazing feeling to be able to get married in the state where I live. And I know that with the work that the HRC is doing, that uh, one day that will be a reality here in Pennsylvania as well. It is, uh, it is hard to describe what it feels like to be getting um, a visibility award uh, because there were so many moments in my life, especially growing up, where all I wanted to do was be invisible. Um, Sam Rook is this very scrawny, very short, little Indian American kid. Uh, kind, of, kind of like my character, Paul G. Uh, but I grew up in a small neighborhood in a very white Midwestern town where at the time it seemed like everybody was an athlete from my perspective. Um, and I decided in my mind that at a very early age that being different was um, not a good thing. That it was something that uh, made me less than, that it was something that I should feel ashamed of, and that it was something that made me want to hide away. And so when feelings of sexuality started to come up, that was just one more thing that I piled on to this big ball of shame that I, I held inside me. Uh, as, as we got older, my family moved to a larger city. I met some people of color. I grew into the hulking man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while I'd be lying to say that uh, it still isn't sometimes challenging to be a person of color in America, or that it isn't sometimes embarrassing when I'm trying to use a bench press machine at the gym <laughs> and someone asks me if they can work in with me. Um, that's always a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of messages from the outside world telling me that being a person of color is actually something that I should celebrate. And I got a lot of feedback that this body was actually serving me quite well. But I didn't get a lot of messages telling me that my sexuality was okay. I remember when we, later on in life, we moved to Tampa, Florida, and I was in middle school, and I was driving in a carpool uh, to school, and I remember hearing a joke on the morning radio show. And the morning DJ, this was a joke, the DJ said, uh, man, I just wish they would take all those gay people and ship them off to an island far away from the rest of us. And then the other DJ popped in with a punchline, which was, they already have, man. It's called Manhattan. Um, well, guess what? I live in New York now. <laughs> and nobody shipped me there. Uh, and maybe that DJ hasn't heard, but it's a pretty awesome place to live. Uh, I know we're in Philly, so I'll get into that New York and Philly, by the way. But um, New York's a pretty great place to live. And I, I can say that as an adult. But as a kid, I remember sitting in that carpool, surrounded by my friends, and wishing I could be invisible. I'm very lucky now because I have so many amazing LGBT friends. I have so many straight friends who love their LGBT brothers and sisters. I have um, uh, support of so many members of my family. My mom and my sister are here with me tonight. Difficulties and also so many 
joyous occasions. Um, he might be a little bit crazy because he has a great son, which is like for me. <laughs> so, you know, we're that. But, uh, but no, he's amazing. He's going to get a lot of flack for the fact that he couldn't be here tonight. He is working. Uh, but he sends all of his love. What? Uh, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have so many people in my life that affirm for me every day that I'm more than okay just the way I am. But I gotta say that that fear and shame that made me want to be invisible as a kid is so deep-seated that it still has the power to rear its ugly head. Uh, this past year, I was named to Out Magazine's Out 100 list for 2013. Uh, but the other half of that story is that they had approached me about being uh, on the Out 100 list in previous years. And I had said no, because I heard that voice of fear that said, Oh God, what would it be like if everybody knows that you're gay? Um, I remember getting the script for the episode you guys saw, a very little clip of it. So there was the episode of Weeds where my character came out of the closet. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the show, but in season two of Weeds, Mary Louise Parker had literally pushed my character into a closet and shut the door. And then in season three, this drug dealer with the gun was going to open the door, and I, my first line was going to be, I'm gay. Um, and it was very funny, but I remember getting the script and sitting in my living room with my now fiance and reading this. And even though I was so comfortable in my everyday life, having that crazy voice of fear pop up and said, what will it be like to play a gay character on TV? But here's what I learned. When I did the Out 100 list, my inbox was flooded with emails that said, congratulations, that's awesome. When my character on Weeds came out of the closet, it gave that character a chance to flourish, and that character got quite the fan following. When I played a character on Whitney who was struggling with his bisexuality, it gave that show the chance to say something and to be political. And when I tweeted a picture of my partner and I getting engaged in front of the Taj Mahal in India, a country which had recently effectively recriminalized homosexuality, I got tweets from around the world saying, thank you for making this public. We're so happy for you. And I am so grateful to get these messages, but I'm also so grateful to be in a position where I can be visible enough to put these messages out into the world because um, to me, these messages are so important to counteract those messages of shame and fear uh, that so many of us were taught as kids. And I think this is what I'm most thankful to the HRC for because every time you fight for the right to marry, every time you push for legislation that protects the LGBT community, every time you work with people who are struggling with coming out, every time you're working with a young person, every time you're working with someone who is who's grappling with marrying their religion to their sexuality, you're sending a message. And that message is, we are not less than, we are in fact equal. There it is. Um, so many people have noted tonight so much work that is left to be done. These recent pushes for laws and states here in the United States that would allow people to discriminate legally are disgusting. We've got to get gay marriage in states like Pennsylvania. We have to continue to use our power and to use our visibility to affect change in governments around the world that are continuing to persecute their LGBT citizens. But I have no doubt in my mind that if we all work together, and if we all become more and more visible, that we will 100% succeed. So thank you so much for having me here with you all tonight, and thank you for this incredible honor. Amazing.